Hi, I'm Espen. I'm a software developer. I'm here to talk about innovation. This chant was uh, recorded at a Manchester City game. My team, Volrenga, has a similar chant, except when they do it, which is like once a year, because they're shit. It's ironic. It's an ironic chant saying that it's easy to score a lot of goals. For Man City, it is easy. For Volrenga, it's not easy. So the chant is ironic, and so is the title of this talk. Because innovation is easy, but at the same time, it can be incredibly hard. As humans, we excel at identifying an issue or possible uh, improvement. We apply a solution, and then we see if it was better. We find an itch. We scratch it and see if that worked. If we can't quite get to the itch, we take a stick and we we scratch the itch with a stick. These days, we can get possibly an implant and then have the brain signal the implant, and then a robot will come scratch our backs. Uh, sometimes we, w it's to control the world without all the hassles of armed conflict. Therefore, we take a college dating app and we turn it into a weapon for overthrowing governments. Yes, that is Facebook I'm talking about. So we are pretty good at scratching itches in new ways. However, these days we've got it all backwards. We want to innovate, and the goal is to be perceived as innovative. Scratching itches isn't really all that important anymore. Instead of empowering workers to gradually improve things and create innovative products and processes, we employ people and create processes to help the poor workers who you pay more than half a million kroners, who you probably spent a million kroners hiring in the first place. Of course, they need help in figuring out how the hell to do their job. We send C and mid-level executives on study trips to the US, the country also known as the country of the great monopolies, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, and Google, where the most, they go to the place where the most likely exit for any startup is to get acquired by a monopoly. We think that by simply being there, some of their magic dust will come upon us and we will become geniuses just like them. We pay people a shit ton of money for blowing smoke out of their asses and we label that an innovation lab. We have a thriving industry around innovation. Very much similar to that of the old Wild West, where they sold something called snake oil. It would basically cure whatever problem you had. As long as you drank that mixture, all your problems would go away. These days, we have books, seminars, workshops, you can hire consultants, etc all selling the idea of the way. The way for you to unlock your inner innovator as a person or as a company. Sadly, running a Google Design Sprint will not propel your company into an innovation powerhouse, nor will creating an intrapreneur incubator inside your company will help you anything at all. Just as unlikely as walking around in a startup incubator without shoes will make you founder material. 
we want so desperately to believe in the fairy tales about innovation. But they're mostly lies. Newton did not sit underneath the tree, get hit by an apple in the head, and discover gravity. No, of course not. It was years of hard work by a team of people. He was not a genius. Tesla, the person, not the car. Turns out, even though a lot of people think he innovated all this stuff, most of the things were already made for him, so he was more like a thought leader in a sense. And now comes the biggest lie of all that any innovator tell themselves. It is the promise that if you build it, they will come. I know firsthand this is not the case. I've been part of several startups who've built stuff, followed all the processes, done all the analysis, had all the data, and still it failed. Nobody came just because we built something, and it will be the same for you. Just because you're very proud of it doesn't mean that anyone's going to show up or buy it. We see all these stories being told at panels, at conferences, interviews in the media, etc. People creating a narrative in retrospect to make themselves look good. Whenever I hear any of the thought leaders blabber on about how amazing a trip their startup was, I think about these people right here. It's basically the same thing they're doing. Trying to one-up each other, telling the most amazing story. Luckily, all of you don't have to buy into this bullshit, because I possess a silver bullet, and I'm going to share it with you all. Sounds good? You want to hear it? Hey, OK, then I'll tell you. Cut utilization of all employees down to less than 70%. It is the best investment in innovation culture your company can make guaranteed. Empower workers to make improvements to the way they work, and you will see innovative solution products and ideas thrive. Guaranteed. However, getting all these ideas out has got us a new problem. Who's going to be in on these innovative projects? This is where this talk becomes about all of you attending. So last night, I bought all your personal information online. Even your banks will sell that information these days, I read. Then I threw together some code and created a neural network that I trained in record time, faster than anyone has done before. And I had this AI, which was designed to answer one simple question. How many of you will ever be innovating anything? You want to see the, what it predicted? You'll see it anyway. Zero percent. Amazing. So why do you think the AI predicted this? Well, the first thing is that you are here. What that tells the algorithm is that you're probably pretty well off attending a pretty expensive innovation conference. And it also means that you're probably holding a position inside your company, which means something. And all of this, in summary, means that you're probably in a pretty comfortable place, which in turn means that you're probably not equipped to take part in an innovative project. 
which is fine. It's okay. You don't have to be innovative. Not everyone is in a place personally or professionally where they can take on an innovative project. And tricking yourself into thinking you can will only make you miserable. And don't worry about it. Like, there's so many jobs out there where you don't have to innovate anything, and they are also important for companies. Because innovation is all about thriving while uncomfortable. That is the one thing that anyone who's ever taken part in any such endeavor will tell you. You will experience a lot of uncomfortable situations, make decisions without the data that you ideally need, do things you're not really trained for at all, and you will have to live with the feeling that you don't really know if it ever was a good idea. Designers might end up writing documentation, coders might end up selling something, business developers might end up coding, all this stuff. And on top of that, it can be a pretty lonely place where the only thing you'll have to trust is your own instincts and your gut feeling. People inside your company might want you to fail. Competitors might be breathing down your neck. Or worse, people who put money in are probably looking for some kind of return of their investment at some point. And you will have to make decisions which you know are just guesswork. And that is not something that is for everyone. And there's also this thing that you have to live with. You have to constantly live with the possibility that all your hard work ends up in nothing but a complete and utter failure. Even if you put in an enormous effort, you had the right people, you had all the money, you followed all the processes, it could still fail. And that's just how it is. Realizing, however, that this is what, it's what is to be expected, taking on an even innovative project can be a festival of joy, learning, and just pure bliss. And I wish all of you the best of luck on your journeys on taking on innovative product projects. Before I say thank you, I just want to encourage everyone to, when you leave the premises of the conference, go outside to the Fedora workers who are on strike. They are they're protesting because their employer doesn't pay them a living wage. While we're in here with our 600,000 a year salaries or more, so you should go out, donate some money, and make sure they can make a decent living. Thank you.